Hi everyone, it's Raja. And Raven. And you're watching this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Fashion Photo Review. <laughs> What are we talking about today? Well, I think we should change our tone. Our ball tone. Arr. I also happen to have my Perfect Package 3.0 by Manscaped. It comes with its own ball toner. Da -ka -da -ka. A couple of sprays, revives the balls. It helps them feel a little more fresh, formulated for high friction areas. It has witch hazel and it has aloe. You should take care of your balls just as much as you should take care of your face. They need to be ready when they need to be held, loved. Yes, or bounced on the chin. Mm. Don't forget your Perfect Package 3.0 comes with the Lawn Mower, which has a replaceable ceramic blade. Get 20% off plus free shipping on your Perfect Package 3.0 when you go to manscaped.com slash toot. Check out the link below. All right, Raven, what are we doing today? We are tooting and booting the looks from the main stage of the last episode of season five All-Stars of RuPaul's Drag Race at the Wax Woman, Mass Woman West. So just like any season of RuPaul's Drag Race, you want to bring something that you hold on to, waiting to wear it and say, this is what I'm gonna wear on the main stage that final time. Now the queens who have been eliminated are back and they are gonna be tooted and booted as well. So let's see what each of these bitches brought. Category is All-Star Eleganza. First contestant. Derek Berry. That is a beautiful gown. I love the pleating on that skirt. I think that's beautiful, the way it falls. I love the, the bustier. I love the shape that it comes up to. I don't like the white ribbon hanging down the back and the hair with it. This dress needed an updo. It deserves something different. The dress itself is really quite beautiful and the hairstyling is good, but it just doesn't go with that dress. I would have liked the hair if it were chopped right below the chin. It is a beautiful dress and beautiful hair, but it just doesn't go. She is not a ball gown kind of queen. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a boot. I give it a boot. Next. Angina. Oh, I love it. I love the newsprint. This harkens back to the glory days of Galliano for Dior when there was newsprint that he used as part of his like uh, collection. And you know, Angina through the season has really brought it. Every outfit has been immense, cool, interesting, huge, avant-garde. I love that huge vinyl bow that matches the vinyl gloves and the little fascinator, because you know she loves to wear super glue little fascinators on her head. There's a little alligator eating a bird fascinator. I find it fascinating. Is that an alligator or a crocodile? Um, Do you know how you can tell which is which? How? Because an alligator says, see you later, and a crocodile says, see you in a while. <laughs> That's a total dumb dad joke. Mm. I just have to get over that dumb joke really quick. <laughs> she's a fashion girl and she is, she's showing herself off right now and I love it. I think she looks great and I give this a toot. Toot. Next we bring to the stage, Mariah Balenciaga. That gown is gorgeous. When I tell you a gown belongs on a body, this is what I mean. Mariah knows how to make the gown move and shift, how to make the tail scoot behind her as she turns over her shoulder. That's what I'm talking about. That is her dress. That dress belongs to her, it fits her. I would have done different hair. I would have liked to have seen maybe something that was a little more of a blue hue, maybe not as curly, or it was kind of done like those loafs. But that gown is beautiful. Bitch, it is a fucking toot. It's a toot. Next. Mayhem. It's a beautiful color on her. It fits her. It accentuates everything that is beautiful about her, her skin tone. I love that huge billowy sleeve. And it also says, you know what? I'm done with the contest. I'm just gonna look gorgeous. I'm not here to kind of prove anything to you other than the fact that I am Mayhem Miller and I am here to bring the party. And she is 
The Party 2. I give it a 2. Next, India Farah. It's lovely. The closer I look at this gown, the more I realize that there was a lot of work put into this. You can always tell by the direction of ostrich feathers that are placed on a dress. Those are just little pieces of ostrich that are placed in the correct places. As a dress itself, as a structure, I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I don't know. I wish that the appliques on the breast kind of cupped the breast more instead of look like they're just kind of, let me just glue these on top. When she was presenting it on the stage, she was like bouncing her titties. She really wanted the titties to be a feature, which I think is weird in a dress like that. I have seen this type of thing done before and it's been done just a little bit better. There are so many things I've seen India do that I'm like, oh. And this one is not one of them. I give it a boot. I'm gonna give it a two. Next, we bring to the stage Alexis Mateo. I like it. There's a bit of an unusual design to it, and I like that it doesn't look like Alexis is forcing herself into this dress, which has been some moments that I've seen on this season. This dress looks like it fits her, looks like it belongs to her. She is serving it and working it the way she needs to. I would have lost the tiny plumes along the bottom. That strip of feathers you can buy. It didn't need that. You know, I love black and white. I love stripes, but I also love that silver piping on it with that matte black glove. I would have pulled them feathers off, but I do love the dress. I give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two. Next to the stage, Blessing Claire, a dream. An actual dream. Everything from head to toe. The construction of the hair. The hair alone is a piece of art. She looks like she's got a tiny tiara on her head, ready to grab the scepter. The tiered pleats, there's layers and layers of it. Look at all the rhinestoning that continues down her leg. It is exquisite. There is nothing I've ever seen as fantastic on RuPaul's Drag Race as of yet since this look. It kind of looks like she took her little outfit she made for the country backyard thing and put it over a rhinestone bodysuit. And did it correctly. It really says a lot about her taste level and um, it's very fashion-y, it fits her beautifully. See what I mean? I keep saying it. It looks like it belongs on her. Two. This is a toot. Next to the stage. Jujube. Oh, she is going for Laotian goddess. Hold on, I need to lay down. I need a pillow. I'm gonna faint. You okay, bitch? I'm okay, I'm better now. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely stunning. The bodysuit is done perfectly. I love that there's a little bit of a shoulder in there. All of the appliques, rhinestones, everything are put in the right places to accentuate her curves. It is sparkling with fire from every single one of them stones is clean, hitting the light in the right way. The crown, everything is beautiful. I love that you said that the stones are clean because sometimes the stones ain't clean. No, the stones and there's cloudy. times where, where, yeah, a queen will walk out and they're they're wearing something covered in stones, but none of them are sparkling. This bitch is sparkling. It's cultural too, which everyone kind of appreciates. I think especially as Asian American queens, me being one of the only Asians who have ever won RuPaul's Drag Race, I really appreciate seeing culture represented in this way. So I love this very, very much. And it was really beautifully executed and well done. I give her a two. Two. Next, Miss Cracker. She is giving a story about her heritage. It's a beautiful dress. I love the color. I love the detail. I haven't always been a big fan of her visuals, you know, but I think this one really, really works for her. This dress is very, very well done. Like that pastel and the fact that, that her shoe matches the dress. All the beadwork along the bottom. And that long hair that drapes behind is so, so beautiful. It's just stunning. It looks like it belongs on Miss Cracker. And I give it a two. It's a two. Next, we bring to the stage Shea Gulea. Also in pink, the hair with the bow just sitting right on top. You know what I love about this too is that th this dress can actually fit anybody. Cause it starts right here, right above the tits. So like anything underneath could be hidden underneath there. I like that idea. I like the umpire waisted, is that what it's called? Empire or umpire waisted dress, which is a little higher. Empire. Empire, 
which which says princess to me. And I just love it because I think as edgy as Chez Coulee is, Chez Coulee, I think there are moments where she really gets down on the princess. And that's what I like about this. She looks fantastic in it. It's a very demure, it's debutante. It's someone getting ready to go to the prom back in like, you know, the 60s. It also reminds me of very early, early drag pageant in the 1960s. That was the predecessor to the ball scene, the ballroom scene. And that's what she's giving me. And I'm all up for it. Toot. It's a toot. Trend alert. Pastels. Pastels. Pastels, darling. Pastels for spring, pastels for fall, pastels for summer, pastels for them all. Darling, pastels. Our, Our top, top two of the week, week is... is... Blair St. Clair. I Blair St. Clair. The final top toot of the fifth season of RuPaul's Drag Race. All-Stars Fashion Photo Review belongs to Blair St. Clair. You look amazing, Blair. Congratulations, Shea Coulee. Congratulations, Shea Coulee. Yeah. Yes, bitch. Well deserved. Turning Shea looks Coulea. the entire season. Shea, Shea, Coulea. Shea. Shea. Coulea. 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 The Shea. The Coulea of the Shea. Well, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars may be over, but you can keep binging Drag Race and watch Canada's Drag Race on WOW Presents Plus. Now, if you don't live in Canada and don't have Crave, make sure you check out the link below at WOW Presents Plus and see how you can watch Canada's Drag Race wherever you're at. Okay, girl, we may still be self-isolating, but I think we should head to the great white north and check out Canada's Drag Race. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to get my plane ticket. Bye. See you later.